Okay, guys. Welcome back. I hope that you're having a good week. I thought I heard my son. <laughs> um, I hope that y'all are having a good week. Um, I'm sure things are a little bit better and lighter than they have been over the past couple of days. Give me one second. That's kind of a light on, but um, hopefully that things have been feeling, I should say, a little bit, a bit more lighter than they have been over the past or week or so. <laughs> Since the past like five days, I suppose. Um, but things are. Things are weird right now. We're in a very funny, energetic, vibrational place um, as far as on like a collective basis, but also maybe even in our personal lives um, and the things that we're dealing with in our personal lives. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the astrology. Um, but before that, I'm going to talk a little bit about some things um so the content that i'm providing the format the focus in which that i've been offering it is gonna be shifting a little bit i am not going to be doing so much of the collective type of reading um and i'm not really going to talk about get into exactly what it is that I'm shifting my focus to. I'm just going to start sharing those things. Just when you see things changing, um, know that this is why, that there's a rhyme and a reason to it. And it's probably something that, well, it's what I've always wanted to do. But you know, everything's about timing. And the timing is moving forward, moving into the space that it, it needs to be in for this to become, I should say. So that's happening. Um, what else? So in this reading today, I am going to pull some cards. At first I was like, oh, I'm going to just come and talk. But I'm going to pull some cards. But it's not going to be a weekly reading. I'm just doing a divine timing reading. So it'll be timeless. So whenever you see this, um, it applies. It, it, it will serve you. Unless it just doesn't. You know, because you really have to figure out what a reader is best for you, what, what messages, what messenger is for you, is calling to you. Not everybody's going to have what it is that you need, need to hear. And, you know, it's important that you're not looking for what it is that you want to hear, but what it is that you need, the nourishment, that you need to kind of feed yourself in, in this timing, this shirt in this space that you're in, you know, whatever that space may be. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this astrology real quick. So today, today I'm recording this on Monday, and we had an opposition between Mars and Venus. So there might have been um, Mars is in Aries, Venus is in Libra in their home signs. So this may have created, um, it may have brought up a lot of tension when it comes to our relationships, or if you are, if your relationships are feeling good and, um, you know, everything's just flowing as it should be, things probably, uh, you, you felt that, you know, and this can also, it's also a lot, has a lot to do with the relationship that we have with ourselves, who we identify as, and all of those things. And that is going to come up again pretty strongly um, come over, what is that, on the 13th, Friday 13th, Mars goes direct. 
right? So Mars is all about our authority, our personal power, and how it is that we go about aligning to this. I'm just trying to get where I can have these two screens on here at the same time. Okay, so um, Mars is a lot about our personal power, our authority. This is about like what it is that we're, the confidence that we have in what it is that we're doing. You know, where does it, do you feel like you have um, the know-how to take care of whatever it is that you're needing to take care of, whether that is just planning your life, uh, being a mother, you know, working your job, you know, things of that nature. And with Venus being in Libra, that's a lot about our relationships. So, and it also has to do with money, work, um, health in a sense. Also, how it is that we kind of see ourselves like in a self-value, self-worth. Do we recognize this without needing this to be shown to us through another person? Like, do we need to show up and prove this? You know, so uh, that might be a thing that is coming up over these days. Once Mars, <laughs> once Mars goes direct and comes out of retrograde, that is going to kind of, with Mars going direct, I kind of can see that as an eight of wands type of energy. And eight of wands basically speaks of something being revealed that you weren't uh, aware of once before. So it's kind of like going to show us ourselves and however it is that we've been self-sabotaging ourselves. Um, just haven't been comfortable in our own personal authenticity and in a way recognizing how we've been attempting to prove this as Mars continues to go forward and squares all of this Capricorn energy we're going to be recognizing these power struggles that we've been having like any type of um, cycles that we've been in that either we've just picked up from family or things that have kind of been triggered in us where right because patterns stem from some emotional imprint that manifests through a pattern of thoughts a pattern of behaviors right based off of this emotional trigger that wounded us chiron right because chiron is in aries as well so that has a lot to do with this whole identity and how we identify as but if you've been putting in the efforts if you've been doing the work you know that that's so important you know um to really make sure that you're taking care of yourself doing the work is the ultimate self-care because that is well that's how i see it anyway i should say that because that is how you keep yourself from being triggered that is how you keep yourself from not seeing things clearly from that is how you keep yourself from projecting um onto people onto situations that you experience in your life you know so you know really taking a look at the self and just seeing you, you know? So what else? Then we are having this Pluto in Jupiter conjunction. So this is gonna be a very revelatory <laughs> energy, right? So what's going on right now is not going to be going on the same way by the time Friday the 13th comes on, comes, whatever it is that we assumed to be true up until this point, we're going to realize that that was not what it, what we thought it was. I don't know, we just, well, we're still in this election, right? I know people are saying that Joe Biden is our president, but it is a projection, a projected president-elect 
So that means it is not finite. It is not a say so. This kind of reminds me, I don't know if y'all remember or old enough, but you remember that time when we all thought Al Gore was our president? And then 30 days later, we found out that he wasn't. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's some weird stuff going on right now. And when that happened, I remember I was 11. I was in middle school. And I don't really remember, remember it. But what I do remember it, remember was the energy the tension, the, 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 the angst, the fear, you know, the, um, the chaos in a sense, right? Because when we see these people, um, these elected officials, you know, and who we deem responsible for what it is that is possible in our life, that can make happen in our life, that can cause some kind of upset, you know, but in reality, no matter who our president is, we are capable of all things, no matter what, right? Because we are sovereign beings. That is our birthright. We get to choose. It's all about choices. No one can stop you from making whatever choice it is that you choose to make only if you allow, allow them to, you know? So I feel like the biggest lesson out of all of this is recognizing where it is that we have not been individually tapping into our own freedom, our own sovereignty, you know, and where it is that we are willing to be disgusted by another <laughs> based off of what it is that they choose, like the identity, individual Mars and Aries energy when Mars goes direct, we're going to be seeing a lot of this, you know, recognizing, seeing ourselves and how we just haven't been um, in the best, showing up in the best space that we possibly can, you know, like, where's our compassion? Where is the love? Where are you willing to really just be kind you know venus and libra that kindness that fairness that justness that allowing another person to be who it is that they are you know without needing them to change and sometimes that looks like space you know um a changing dynamic of the way relationships operate and it's, that doesn't make anyone wrong or anyone right. We just have to do what is best for us, whether what we're experiencing is creating an expansion in our life, right? Which is this Jupiter and Pluto, or is creating this contraction, which would be Mars square, this Jupiter and Pluto, and us recognizing where it is that we are contracting ourselves based in perception, based in um, judgment, based in the lack of confidence, based in lack of surety of who it is that we know ourselves to be, of being who we are, you know? So, what else is here? Um, the sun is in a trine to, to Neptune, and, you know, that that's with trines, people are always like, oh, that's such benevolent energy. It's going to be so much luck. It's great. But in reality, trines um, really manifest in laziness, especially if you are already equipped to being one particular way and not doing something, it's easy to continue not doing that, right? And with the sun and Neptune, they can bring a lot of illusion about um, how it is that you're expressing yourself, thinking that you're expressing yourself in this way that it is from this higher space when in reality you're expressing yourself from the space of ego, you know, and not really um, seeing the forest for the trees, recognizing why everything has come to be the way it has come to be. The reason why things 
had to go the way that they had to go. You know, it it's just what's necessary when we don't choose to um, learn from insight given to us from other from another. You know, some people have to learn things the hard way, and it's nothing wrong with that. Like some people need the experience in order for things to really be set within them. You know. And it takes time to learn to how to learn from another person's perspective, from what it is that another person is sharing with you, you know, without uh, writing it off and making it seem as if they are trying to either change you or attack you or anything of that nature. And with the, with the sun, the sun is very willful, you know, it wants to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. So, and with it being in Scorpio, it's just unearthing a lot of these deep, dark things, these very embedded, hidden aspects of ourselves that um, tend to uh, influence us to operate from that space of ego you know and with this jupiter conjuncting pluto that shit gonna be revealed <laughs> you know we're gonna be like oh whoa i've been doing this i didn't know oh my goodness you know and it because with jupiter it can go one or two ways like it can bring benevolence or it uh because it's, 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 it's an expansive energy. It can either bring benevolence, right? Or it can bring an exacerbation of energies that we've already been experiencing. But we are really in this time of transformation. And with this being in Capricorn, it's about what is structured, what has been with us for a really long time that, you know, just needs to change that rebuilding the foundation honestly you know and just changing things for the better so things can feel lighter so things can be more of an Aquarian nature but a higher octave of Aquarius that really loving and supportive and um, accepting and giving nature that Aquarius operates from um, and really just allowing yourself, you know, to see things from a higher perspective, from that God mind. So and then Mercury, Mercury moves pretty quickly. So it'll be in Scorpio. It's going back into Scorpio this week. So everything that came up during the retrograde It's kind of going to be allowing, giving us that room, that space to be able to change those patterns, those projections, those um, things it is in which we think we know, right? Because that's Mercury. It's also about our perspective, perspective on our relationships, perspective on what we perceived as a power struggle when really we've always been the one that's been in control if we chose to do that, you know, on all levels. And also how it is there, a lot of stuff is about to come up when it comes to deception, how we've been deceiving ourselves and deceiving others who may be recognizing how others have been deceiving us you know based on their own personal perspectives being revealed to us and how it is that they're going about communicating these things um and right now mercury's in a square to saturn so that is a really a revelatory because mercury brings opportunity i mean mercury squares bring opportunity for change because it's 
uh, embracing and encouraging growth. It's inviting you to see where it is that you're blocking yourself. And Saturn does this kind of like, okay, this is where you need to do the work. And Mercury is like, well, this is what I think it is. And Saturn's like, well, it ain't that. All right, you let me show you what it really is because this is not working. We need to fix this. Like we need to rebuild. You know, things, you know, and with with school, with it being, it's it's going to eventually sex out. And once it gets to that twentieth degree of Scorpio, and that's when we'll be able to recognize the effort that we really need to put in that needs to be placed in order to be able to cultivate the growth that we need. It's going to present the opportunities to change what it is that has happened over this time. You know, so what else? Is there anything else I want to talk about? I don't think so, you guys. Because all the rest of the planets, things are going to be moving quickly. And those, that is what is just present and prominent right now. So I am going to start pulling some cards. Um, I also have a candle here that I fixed with some herbs, herbs that encourage uh a calming nature, tranquility, offering of peace, offering also protection, um, and kind of just encourages stillness in a sense, because right now we are still in this very still state, but we are going to have to be willing to be still and so that we are not in these anxious states of being with what is about to come up because it's really important that we can um, take the time to pull ourselves out of things. So it's kind of like the saying, be in the world, but not of it. And a lot of things that's going on right now can really encourage us to be of the world, you know, stating our opinions, posing our thoughts and all of those things and you can either choose to be an observer or you can be within it and be very subjective with everything that's going on so you know at the end of the day the choice is really yours there is no right or wrong we're doing whatever it is that we need to do for ourselves you know and showing up and being who it is that we need for our lives until we see that something else is new something else different is needed you know so I'm gonna like this a little bit just to clear the space the energy but overall I hope that you guys are doing well that you're feeling good and encouraged about life and that you are willing to step up for yourself, not for anybody else, you know, because our lives are not really for anyone else. The biggest change that we can offer the world, you know, is to do what it is that we need to do for ourselves to transform in the ways that we need to transform for us, you know, because can't nobody else do the work for us. Okay, let's see. Thank you for this time, space, and this place. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to offer any insight any guidance that you, our ancestors, our angels, our guides would like to share with us over these for whenever, whoever watches this, let this speak to them clearly and that they get the messages that they need in order to move forward in their lives with trust, 
Tip nails. The surety and confidence in your heart, period. I ask that you speak clearly through me. And let those who are here that need something receive what it is that they're asking for. So you guys, if there's something you're holding in your heart, bring that here. And so let's see what it is that Spirit is offering up this evening. I'm not going to pull a lot of cards. It's going to be short. I'm going to just do it. I'm going to do space it is if you're in there that you are seeing this video. Okay. <laughs> so the first card that come out is the death card. So we are having a lot of, we are having transformations taking place. Things are dying in our life that are no longer um, sustainable in order, it's, it's the foundational things that are coming undone, that are withering away so that we can really get into this clear space and move out of where it is that we've been all this time that has continued to draw us down keep us in that dark space in in that shadow you know because the thing about shadow is you know it has to be acknowledged so that we can utilize its lessons what what is it that we're being asked to integrate so that we can really manifest the life that we want so that we are not operating from the space of chaos and that, you know, really manifesting or reflecting outwardly in our lives, you know, instead of being in the space of always perpetrating or blaming that something is wrong with us being a victim out of um, another person's doing, being, going, choosing, and taking responsibility for the fact that, you know, oh shit, my life looked like this because this is the ground that I built it on. So this is coming to me, you know? And we're moving, we're, we're, we're only focusing on what is true everything else whatever is not real whatever is not true it's going you know the gaining clarity in a place where um our perspectives have not really been supportive of us um supportive of the life we want you know supportive of being able to really communicate in a way that is communicate in a way that has been um, truthful, honest, you know, pure in a sense. And also how it is that we see our own personal selves, you know, especially if we've been uh, having a lot of negative self-talk, that is ending, that those things are moving away we're willing to do what it is that is needing to be done in order to move forward in edit or order to continue tracking forward in the journey in the light yeah but it's going to the strength card it's definitely going to take our will to do this because this is going to be a change that is happening and when that 
when we're moving into the new space of being, it takes a lot of courage to stay consistent with that, to stay um, aligned with the truth, to stay, especially when it's in the mind. I mean, most, most things are in the mind, pretty much everything's in the mind, right? So it's kind of like we really have to, Yeah. We really have to um, be willing to do what needs to be done in order to uh, bring things to a completion, right? Because these are simply cycles. We can call it karma, but karma is really outdone. That word, y'all, it's a cycle, all right? Whether it's a family cycle, a cycle that you even came through with, all karma is is a cause and effect. I did this, so this is happening, you know? So we're really going to have to um, stand strong, keep 10 toes down in a sense, you know, to move forward and, and face our fears, right? Face face the fears we, we may also be having some fear in communicating the truth or some fears may be drawn up based off of the truth being communicated as well and we're going to have to be courageous in moving forward and saying and speaking the things that um that need to be said, that need to be shared, you know, maybe you just need to be comfortable with stepping out and, and doing the work that is meant for you to do. It's going to take courage. Don't be a coward. So we got the moon card, right? And the moon card is all about things being revealed, but it's also about shadows and illusions and, um, mm. A lot of things are about to come to light, come to surface. You know, what you we are about to recognize the quality and sustainability of the seeds that we've been planting in our life. And if they have been of value or if they have, um, or if we have been operating from a space of illusion, you know, and this is gonna lead us to have to make a choice to go in a different direction, whether we're gonna to continue to go down the route that we're going, or if we're gonna do something totally different, you know, because, and this is all about operating from the space of what is real, you know, not this, oh, I think, you know, or, oh, I feel, you know, cause it's cool to feel and everything, but feelings are subjective. You know, they are not always uh, the truth. Facts aren't always the truth. The only thing that is true is the truth, you know? So it's a willingness, right? The strength card in, you know, the seeing the necessity and the benefit in moving beyond the fogginess, the lack of clarity. Wow, just a lot of cycles are about to come to an end, but these things are coming to an end based off of what's being revealed and the way that we've been going about in our connecting with other people, the way we've been going about um, just the space in which it is that we occupy when we are connecting with others, but also just seeing life. These things are really moving in a different direction because the strength card, the, the lion, is looking at this, at this knight of swords. So he's like, all right. Let's see this. What is the truth? And this woman over here, she's here looking at this moon card. In a sense, she's like, okay, I'm going to take this in. I'm going to receive what I'm, I'm going to recognize was being illuminated. I'm going to be strong in facing what is real, what is the truth, and be willing to work through 
this stuff that just don't work anymore, you know? Um, and it's, it's time to step into our own personal power so that we can really come out of that space of victimization because a lot of times that's what illusions create. They create a, this, 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 <laughs> this energy of, a, of the victim, you know, because, oh, woe is me. You know, the moon is, the moon itself rules cancer, but the moon card in, in the tarot is ruled by Pisces. And Pisces, um, it's a martyr energy, like kind of sacrificing the self. But it's also an energy of victimization. And usually the victimization comes from the lack of clarity, the lack of being able to really see the truth of the matter, you know, out of wanting to create whatever um, the imagination makes up, right? Because the moon, Pisces, is about uh, imagination. It's about the darker aspects of things. It's what's hidden from our plain sight. Okay, and so we got the Wheel of Fortune. Things are changing. Things are turning. Um, so like I said, they, after this week, things are not really going to be what they have been. You know, and uh, the Wheel of Fortune is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is about to conjunct Pluto. Here's Jupiter. Here's Pluto. Right? And this transformation, this, this death, in this rebirth that's happened is really um, bringing us into a new cycle that is we're coming from out of one fixed state to go into another state that is really that we can build a solid foundation upon that's going to take us into this new world that we're building for ourselves. Right. So the Seven of Swords. It's going to be a lot of deception being revealed. All right. A lot of trickery and fuckery being revealed. A lot of truths coming out on how it is that we have not just been seeing things clearly. And I'm, I'm looking at this. Um, sure, for a personal level, but just on a collective level, on a world level, it, it things are not what it what we believe them to be. What they seem to be, the truth is coming out, and it's time for us to come into the space of being fair, being um, willing to hear the truth willing to judge from an unbiased space, you know, and recognize we're really going to have to be strong and have the strength to do what is necessary, you know, and realign our perspectives where they must go. You know, this Queen of Swords is also... Um, this can also be uh, a woman who is, you know, just very sure of things. Maybe you may be, there may be a woman in your life um, where that you are, are seeing or however the case may be that is, or we could just even say this is a person because it can even be a man who is just, very fair and unbiased, but not willing to deal with anything else other than the truth, you know, and them really offering you support and being strong in these decisions that are being made, this change that is happening. The King of Wands in really coming into this space of, um, our authority, you know, our sense of surety of self in taking 
allowing this 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 change of energy these things that are being revealed to inspire us to do things a little bit differently you know to show up in a little bit more sense of surety of ourselves to see ourselves a little bit more clear you know there may also be a man and a woman that is in your life that brings this type of energy um that are you know inspiring and very truthful and very sure of their selves you know this are air signs um gemini libra aquarius fire signs aries leo sagittarius granted this doesn't have to be a feminine this doesn't have to be a masculine this could just be two people who are um this energy here you know and there may be some illusions being revealed uh in regards to this masculine energy this king of wands energy right and the truth of him is coming out to be seen to be shown yeah so the seven of wands right so we are going to have to basically just be steadfast and in, in what it is that we have to do for ourselves you know no matter what happens we have to have the strength to do that again and be okay with just gotta roll with the punches you know can't really allow um we can't allow what's coming up for us to deter us in a way that brings us to this space of a pause where we stop and don't continue forward in whatever it is that we're doing um we really have to be willing to uh, go with the wind you know and really just accept kind of, and i don't <laughs> okay because it's so many things you know i we just really have to be willing to face the facts face the truth face what's real and accept things kind of for what they are and just keep the strength in letting things be what they must what you know there are some things that we cannot change that we can only accept and that's what this really feels like and we will we'll, it's almost like we are coming to this split to this space of um courageous and in it is kind of kind of the bottom of the deck is the six of pinnacles so it's kind of like we may be coming in this space of connecting more community working together um being more loving towards one another like things will get better but not first until the truth is being seen and us being willing to accept whatever that truth is whether that's in our lives whether that's what we have to do within the world So we got the priestess card. How are you being step what called to step up and lead? So this is basically about you being the leader of your life, you know, or maybe you are leading others, whichever one it is, 
um, it's time to do that now. We can't continue to allow things uh, to hold us back. We have to eventually step up and be the lead in our life so it can flow in the direction it is that it's going. Like it, we are meant to take all of these things, right? Because as king, as king of wands and queen of swords, they hold that wisdom to be able to speak the truth, to uh, swiftly act on the, their inspirations and not hold back on that you know and really are willing to do what needs to be done you know we may be in this energy may also present this kind of um a need to come back home to ourselves to remember who it is that we are on a core level right because this mintakam card speaks about longing for home, belonging, the original light workers, right? So they, this is, we are probably gonna be seeing a lot of people who do light work, who are supportive of others, who are facilitators, healers, stepping up to the front and being present for others. Um, but at the same time, this is also feeling kind of left out in the cold maybe and that is why you're needing to step up needing to be to step up and lead in your life so things can go accordingly how it is that you are desiring right because home starts here everything else is just gifts good tidings and all of that and work hard and yeah so it's time to do something to shift our vibration. This again is the transformation card. We can no longer stay stuck. We can't also be in the space of um, having things, taking things too seriously, you know, and recognizing our power, recognizing that King of Wands energy in us, that we are sovereign and we have the ability to make whatever happen that if we so choose, if we so choose to operate from the space of truth, is really all up to us. Like nobody else dictate, dic dictates anything, you know. It's time for us to kind of really come out of this selfish space that we've been in, very self-centered, if that's where we've been because self-centeredness can manifest in so many different ways like we could be so focused on something with us that we're not even seeing the full picture of how it's affecting another it's really time for us to lighten up but we're not going to be able it, this is going to be a process you know you really have to again be willing to put in the work that's what that seven of wands is like who no matter what i gotta do i'm gonna do that no matter what comes up no matter what obstacles i see no matter what blockages seem to be happening i'm gonna do this i'm gonna be all right we gonna be all right because doing doing the self healing, the self work, like it it gets it's not cute, you know. It takes a lot of time to accept things about yourself that you have not been willing to see, have not been willing to accept where you've been operating from this shadow space and it's time to do that. So as a collective, I should say, because there are people who have been doing the work, you know, and their lives are reflecting that, but then there are those who um, kind of blanket it with ego 
in and suppress the things that need to really be uprooted and released so a life can be less chaotic for them. So we have the journey. So this is basically saying don't get caught up on one thing. Don't get caught up on one way <laughs> of things going because it is a journey. Um, what is happening now is happening so that it can serve you to offer you whatever it is that you need to learn to take with you when you get to the next step. You know, it's forever evolving. We are forever evolving. Unless we're not, some people don't really, some people stay stagnant, you know. Um, but eventually they do change in some respect, or they just, you know, some people do grow to become bitter. Um, but we are moving into a space, we are in a space right now where that is where God, the universe, is making you so uncomfortable that you don't have no choice. You either go crazy, right, or you make the change that needs to be made. So you just kind of just have to go with the flow and, and let things go. Walk through that new door. Continue to be open to the wisdom that's being offered to you as you move forward with the thing. Because we're ending old cycles, it's time for us to stop eating our tail and putting ourselves in these places that, um, these places and spaces that don't really serve us anymore, that keeps us in cycles that need to be let go of, that need to be completed, right? And we already have our, all the things that we need to create whatever it is that we're trying to create to go wherever it is that we're trying to go to get to whatever other side that we're trying to get to. It's us needing to be willing to see that we already have everything accessible to us right here, right now. You know, it's just a matter of utilizing that, you know, and being open to receive. You know, because once you start actively using what it is that you already have, more starts opening up to you to help support you in where it is that you're getting to. It's all about trusting the process, you know, and because you are bountiful right now, you know, but it's a matter of believing that. Mm. Yeah, we definitely have to just in the space of having to change old structures, like how things have been going, whether that's in the world, like under the same type of operations in our lives, the same, it, they, it has to go because it's not allowing us to really grow. It's not allowing us to evolve. It's keeping us in spaces of that are not truthful, that are not honest, that are deceiving. Um, it keeps us small, really. It keeps us dependent as well. You know. So we may have some things we may need to get some structure when it comes to our daily habits our routines our day-to-day -day life um something that's enjoyable like it doesn't have to be rigorous uh for instance like right here in front of me i have things that i have to do i have a schedule right and i just have a list of things that need to get done during the day and I just make sure that those things get done. I don't have any particular order that I do them or anything like that. I just make it enjoyable for me. I make it easy. I make it light. I don't want all that pressure <laughs> in living my life every day, you know. So that whole sixth house energy is, you know, also take care of your health as well. Um, it may be some things coming up surrounding like people who are on this like enemy type of scale level or whatever and um 
I'm like it's kind of time to be done away with that as well but also routines i mentioned that rituals maybe you are thinking about getting pets maybe pets might bring some love into your life um having something to take care of and you know pets are so unconditional they love you because you love them because you take care of them you know and also about our relationships a lot of things about our relationships are changing. It's time to bring in and allow relationships that feel good, that allow us to um, simply show up and be ourselves, where we are not, again, feeling constricted, you know, where we feel that we can expand, that we can grow, that we can trust, that we can love, you know, hell, even learn, maybe even <clears throat> work with as well partnerships are a theme right now as along with um these routines and really this enjoyment energy we really have to get into the space of loving life literally the day-to-day -day life we have to get out of this melancholy this untrustworthy this judgment right space and coming to the space of understanding the space of love and acceptance and compassion and being genuine being freaking real with who it is that you are and with other people that you come in contact with like it's time to change the the roots of how it is that we grow bear grow and bear our fruit you know I'm going to pull some cards from this Gypsy Witch deck. They're like Lenormand cards, which are Lenormand like uh, fortune telling cards, predictive cards. I'm going to pull like two, two, three of these. Depends on what cards come up. Wow, yeah, we really have to let go of this self-centeredness. It's a lot of that. And really choose love. Recognize that everybody is who they are. And you cannot change another person for being who they are. <laughs> like seriously, learn to accept people. Learn to accept yourself so you can accept others, all right? It's that simple. It really is. It may not be simple to get to, but it's that simple. Right. Yeah, so some friendships we got broken glass here. And broken glass speaks about it talks about uh, ill luck, but this also speaks about friendship. Friendships changing. Um, what is the Eight of Diamonds? And it's the Eight of Pentacles. So, and then four and four is eight. That's the strength card. Yeah, so it's going to take some time, like, things are really shifting in a different way so people are probably about to leave your life um but it's also a need to uh recognize how these things in our life have been mirroring us what's going on within us so that we can shift this look that we have been experiencing right because this lack of really being able to enjoy ourselves is what creates bad luck right because luck is not really even a thing for real like that so um yeah people who receive who seem to be very lucky they are just they have good hearts you know they think with 
with positive minds. They think with from a place, they operate from a place of love, you know? So it's really time to come out the space of being skeptical of everything, everybody. Like, not only is it people you can't trust around you, you don't trust nobody. And you don't trust nobody. <laughs> You got all these people around you you can't trust because you don't trust nobody, right? So it's just like you have to change the way it is in which that you're looking in the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror and see what it is that's really there, right? Because you have to master the Eight of Pentacles is about self-mastery. And self-mastery means that you were putting in the work to see who it is that you are, you know? The rod. <laughs> wow. So the rod predicts family quarrels and curinary losses. This is the Ten of Swords. So again, cycles are coming to an end. Um these things of not really seeing ourselves, these things when it comes to our family, um, thing, how it is that we always seem to be losing things, those things are ending. But again, it's about, because ten, ten of Swords is about the root work, right? It's about going within so that you can uh, really change so that you can shift that internal subconscious energy that continues to manifest this ill luck, these broken relationships, right? And things in doing this is going to bring us to the Queen of Swords. <laughs> and the Queen of Swords or the Queen of Spades in the sex says it's a more. He's Cupid. Right, so Cupid speaks of someone looking at you with great love and longing. Right, so when you change, not only will what people see of you change, but what you see will also change. Love is imminent, it's always there, it's always ever present. It's only up to us to choose to see, you know. Yeah. It's time to really. The only way we can come into what's good for us in our life is by accessing that, accessing that through ourselves, you know, and really just being willing to face the music. Yeah. <laughs> And there's the park here. The park foretells a new love when very near a distant false friends. So since we're not reading this in a spread or anything like that, these the the cards that are here and talks about distance. Um I kind of just read the cards as tarot cards both really I take the meanings and combine them so it's really again we're really being encouraged to transform ourselves on a mental level and how we value ourselves how we you know really transform our self-worth and our self-value on an internal level and stop seeking that outside of ourselves through other people so that we can change the love language that exists in our life you know so in our relationships and all of those things and it starts with you it starts with self-care taking care of yourself every day every day get up in the morning do some journaling do some meditating steal yourself you know pray if you are into connecting with your ancestors do that that helps so much, you know, allowing them and giving them space to act on your behalf in your life, which is just really you, right? But being connected to that energy of you is 
allowing you to reconnect with your wholeness, you know, and really tap into that innate energy that always has and always will exist within you, you know, if you so choose to see it, you know, it's all in a matter of you being willing to make the changes and do that root work. And root work just doesn't mean magic for those who are watching this and know about root work. Um, root work is also just a, a process of changing the mind. So maybe you might want to go talk to um, someone who can help you, like a, a, any type of psychotherapist, someone who helps you deal with your mental state, you know, especially when it, it has to do surrounding your self-worth and how you love yourself and recognize and see the blockages that are stopping you from being able to see and recognize your ability to choose what is for you in your life, you know, and why it is that you are in this space of kind of, you know, not trusting others. Maybe you just don't trust yourself and that's why you have a hard time trusting other people. You know, because, yeah, I really just came out of, personally came out of a place of um, having a hard time trusting people, but I had to recognize that I just wasn't trusting myself. And once I got into the space of, well, hey, well, why don't I trust myself, you know, and started um, working on that, then those feelings, they just kind of went away, like, they literally just kind of dissipated, <laughs> you know? So I'm not in this suspicious, speculative place about others anymore, unless I'm seeing, unless they give me a reason to, you know, I'm not just um, choosing to misinterpret another person's motives because of the way it is that I'm choosing to think about them. And the way it is that we choose to think about or see people is usually based in um, some type of conditioning, you know? So we're also working on that as well. That's that death card energy, because um, this is like a, a conditioning type of card. Things that need to be, be that need to die because it's what's been given to us. It's what, it's what we have picked up. This is Scorpio energy. So if you have a lot of Scorpio energy, I really encourage you to work on um, your judgment of others. So Scorpio moon, uh, Scorpio sun moon are rising. If you have a lot of strong Pluto energy as well. Um, also, if you have a lot of strong air energy, be more open with being truthful about what's going on in your life and seeing shit for what it really is and stop perceiving things from this, uh, from something that's not real. Deal, you gotta, you really have to deal with your stuff, right? Because if it, if it, if it, Things, when you're dealing with something, it affects you on every single, you, you're you doing that thing in every level in your life in some kind of way. And it's probably something really small that you don't even think about, that you don't even really question because you've just been doing it for so long. But not until you realize and wake up like, damn, I've been sabotaging the hell out of myself. <laughs> what have I been doing? You know, you have to really take the time, be willing to see yourself for who it is that you are with no judgment. You know, it's fine. Like, it's, it's no judgment. Like, we're all growing here. We're all learning here, learning all the places that we are blocking ourselves off from love you know, and really seeing and recognizing things to be the truth of what it is that they are and not what it is that we are trying to create them to be, elude them to be, deceiving ourselves to be out of just 
being caught up in cycles of self-sabotage, you know? So, okay, you guys, I think I have ran my mouth enough <laughs> this evening. I hope that y'all have a really good week. Um, I hope that y'all take it light. Keep things easy and just flow with what is given to you, you know? And have faith. Trust, operate, and love. Don't be so damn judgy. <laughs> it's a lot of judgmental energy here. Um, don't stop being so suspicious and, you know, stop being so shady. Just be you. You know, it's okay to be who it is that you are um, without having to put on a front. You know, just be you. So you guys, you will choose to be you. It's here, all right? And you will receive that love, giving that love to yourself and receiving that love from others. So it's late. I'm going to bed. I love you guys. And I hope that you have a wonderful week. I hope that you have a prosperous week. I hope that... You know, you see all the things that you need to see that will help support you in moving forward in the life it is that you desire and what you deserve because you're deserving. You worth it. Just know that. So, okay. Oh, also, if right now I'm offering just a check-in reading for those who are interested, and if you are, DM me, email me. I will leave it. It's not um, available on my website um, because I'm only doing this this week. So if you are interested, hit me up and we can talk about it. And yeah, y'all have a great week. Sending you guys all my love and so many blessings. Okay, peace.